So today I want to show you how to do an iPhone screen recording with a mouse cursor. So you can have something that looks just like this when it comes to showing people step-by-step -step tutorials or anything else when it comes to screen recording. So what we're going to actually do is go into our settings right over here. And as I'm recording this, I'm actually using an Xbox uh, One controller. I'm actually not even using a mouse, but you can be using a mouse or a controller. So I'm actually going ahead and kind of jumping back and forth here on my settings page. And you can see my cursor is blue with a little bit of transparency right over there. So we, of course, are going to go into our accessibility section here. Now, I know a lot of videos do also show this part as well, too. So this is just kind of a few extra little steps to get this to look a lot better. Because when you are using a controller or a mouse, you definitely have a lot better control of the overall process rather than if you are sliding with your fingers. So we're going to go and tap over here to touch and our current um, assistive touch is on right over here. So if we actually go into this, this actually opens up a whole another set of settings for us. Now, a lot of people go over here and teach you about doing the tap gesture, which is great. That's kind of uh, what helps get that there. And what we actually want to do here is go to our pointer devices. So if we tap over here, you can actually see I am using the Xbox wireless controller. And then um, I was able to connect that with the Bluetooth device. Now, I actually went in here to add that Bluetooth device rather than just going through a regular Bluetooth. You probably can go through that on the regular Bluetooth side. I just went through and had it done over here. So actually, let me go right back in here. So if I click on here. I can customize some buttons if I really needed to, but for now, everything I have set up is going to work the way I would like to, which is essentially doing what I'm doing right now. So if I go into the mouse keys right over here, you can see it's the uh, keyboard. If I needed to, if I was using the mouse, and then you can see always show menu, we have the performance gesture tapped on there. But this is the part if I'm using a controller to actually go ahead and utilize this. So if I tap this off, I would be able to use the controller as you see here. The sensitivity setting right over here, I have a little bit lower. The interesting thing is on an Xbox controller, if I'm going through the right stick, you can actually see this going really, really slow. So if I needed to, for example, read over the for example, um, section right over here, it'll go a lot slower versus my left thumbstick is going a little bit faster and I can speed that up if I need to as well. Now you can see here, I'm actually scrolling up and down on here by actually holding down on the A button on the controller and then scrolling up or down. You can see the capacity right over here uh, for the idle setting, which is that little icon. You can kind of see it on the top right. So if I actually scroll this up, you'll see it kind of come back in. So I'm actually having it as low as possible because I do not need that when I'm actually utilizing the controller. So it makes things a lot easier because this little menu here, even if it does kind of disappear for a little bit, the second I start moving it, it'll just reappear. And that was the difficult thing about using just my finger on the screen, that if it completely disappeared, I'd have to go back into this little setting here, click on that tap button and kind of go through that entire process all over again. Now you can see here with the custom action buttons right here for the single tap, I have the open menu. For the double tap, I have scroll down. And for the long press, I have the scroll up. Now for the best part of the tutorial is actually customizing this little icon right over here. So you can see mine is blue and it's a fairly large circle. So you can actually customize this as a whole. Now in order to get to that, we're currently in the assistive touch settings. So we're gonna actually go back to where it says touch. And we're going to go back one more time to accessibility. So we're actually going to be here on this main page. And we're going to slide down here where you can see where it says pointer control. So we tap over here and we're going to see a couple different things. So first and foremost, you can see pointer. So if we actually go ahead and tap anywhere on here, we can see our cursor getting bigger. And as it gets a lot bigger, you actually get a little special dot to be able to show you where you are, where as it gets smaller, it doesn't actually have that in there. So wherever you feel is going to be most comfortable for you. And then you can go over where you see it says color. And then this is where you can have either no color, white, blue, red, green, yellow, and then you can actually have your borders increase or decrease as well too. So you can see all of those all happening in real time right over here as I am actually explaining this. So that way you can have your pointer kind of work for either your color or whatever works best for you. Now you can also increase or decrease the contrast, but it's just a toggle here. So you can see it's just a little bit of a difference here if it helps out as well. And there's also right over here, automatically hide pointer. I just have that toggled on at all times so that I am good. If I'm not utilizing the actual pointer, it can go away. But the nice thing is again, with using a controller or a mouse, you'll actually be able to just quickly move it and have it reappear on screen. So here at the Business Nerd, we are all about helping your small business thrive. So check out our next video right over here on screen to keep on learning and growing.